Looking at eBay recently solds, there was approximately 2,000 football cards sold on eBay just today alone, August Monday, August 23rd, and we're, we're not even halfway through the day. Uh, this isn't specifically rookie cards. This isn't specifically modern cards. This is just the full gambit. Now, there were a couple soccer cards in there, but not many. I, I really I went through page by page, 200 results per page. I counted approximately 2,000 solds today alone so if i looked at the course of the weekend we're talking probably close to eight thousand cards sold on ebay football cards we're talking american nfl football cards so today i want to talk a little bit about how the football card investing and flipping strategy has changed from last year to this year and i also uh, i want to talk about that as i open a few purchases myself that i've made on ebay and i'll share with you exactly what I paid for that card, my plans for the card, and everything like that. So let's dig in. While I'm opening this, talk about how the strategy has changed from last year to this year. And I talked to Andrew Perry about this Saturday night in the live stream, which thank you very much for all your support in that live stream, guys. Had a blast. But it's really the fact that last year, almost all of the skill position nfl players were had their rookie cards going up in value quarterbacks as well and this year as the hobby has matured it has evolved and the people that are in the hobby this year are more educated they're they're better informed they because of all the information at our fingertips we're seeing card prices not being driven by hype we i think are going to see card prices driven by production. Now, take this guy for example, Marquez Callaway. He's actually the the, the uh, number one trending player on Player Profiler right now. I mean, he's got the most amount of clicks into his athletic profile. People studying him, getting to know him. Yes. So he was undrafted out of 2020, went to Tennessee, and this guy, what he did really well in college at Tennessee was. 90th percentile 19 yards per reception on average he also had a 33.1 percent college dominator contributing that's the percentage of offensive production he contributed in tennessee 62nd percentile his breakout age at 19.4 when he started actually making meaningful offensive contributions in tennessee he was 19 years old that's 79th percentile that's a really good metric to predict future wide receiver breakout success but the fact that he was undrafted um, therefore, he did not get printed in any of the major Panini sets. And so you have this card right here that you could look at. And so this is his Panini Prism Draft Picks rookie card. And when a player is only printed in these cards in their college uniform, they all hold value, especially, especially when they're autographed. Uh, and in his case, all of his rookie cards are autographed just because he was technically a, a no-name player coming out of last year. And he hasn't really done anything yet, but with injury concerns around Michael Thomas and him definitely missing times with injury concerns and production concerns around Traquan Smith and him potentially missing times or just losing an opportunity share to Marquez Callaway because Marquez Callaway has looked great in training camp He's connected well with Taysom Hill. He's connected well with Jameis Winston. And Marquez Callaway has quickly climbed the depth chart in New Orleans and is going to see, as of right now, he's climbed tremendously in people's average draft positions, meaning he's going up in earlier in fantasy drafts because he is expected to have a higher output of production and that's where we're what we're seeing driving rookie card values up and so the alternative option to this rookie card would have been his rookie contenders optic or rookie contenders auto you know the contenders comes in the optic and a base contenders uh, variations and they're they're auto typically all on card autographs which are nice and this one of him actually has him with the Saints logo but that card is considerably more expensive and I got this at a very fair good price point and you can see that this raw card here is in very good condition and so one thing I showed the last uh, last video that I've been doing thanks to the collector and, and a couple other guys is 
I actually cut some slits into my penny sleeve. So you can see I cut a little slit there in the penny sleeve. So I just kind of want to test this out. I think if I go in that way first, yeah, and check that out, how much easier that was to get that in the sleeve. So now I've got it in a fresh penny sleeve. Another part of my process, I did get a bunch of new scans at fgscards.com. It's an AI uh, grading software that quickly scans your card. You can just upload a picture of the raw card front and back. Now I got to get the this this part of the that part this part of the just kind of squeeze that right there a little bit and get that card safely in this card saver one. Hey, come on, man! I was a little a little rough there, a little rougher than I would have liked, but that's my first one for the day, so <laughs> let me get warmed up. But I think I, I paid around $20 for that card. Being autographed, you can look at other comparable athletes. If they start getting an alpha size opportunity share, when I talk about opportunity share, you guys know that that means, or if you don't play fantasy football, then you should, but um, that opportunity share means right a player needs to be be involved in the offensive production meaning they need to be on the field for snaps snaps turn into routes run routes run turn ins turn into targets targets turn into receptions yardage and touchdowns so when we talk about opportunity share we're looking at snap share we're looking at target share we're looking at air yards which is all the total number of in, in, intended targets the yardage of total number of intended targets whether they actually caught the ball or not so let's get into this next one that says fragile but yeah so just just the overall strategy this year there's been a lot of hype around quarterbacks but i definitely feel the movement for position players is going to shift based on their production which is awesome because it's going to be great for weekly fluctuations in rookie card prices on a week-to-week -week basis based on the production of these players in the NFL and based on the opportunity share that they're going to see in their respective offenses. And then of course, market size and uh, NFL power rankings are going to ha still have an effect on rookie cards as well. You know, players on the Patriots, players on the Cowboys, you, you still will definitely see those guys taking off a little bit easier, a little bit quicker in value compared to, you know, someone on a lesser on a lesser market size team or a team that's just in the bottom of the the nfl power rankings and this was just a it's such a cheap card for a prism silver a card that we know is sp on sp uh for being a, a short print card we know that panini left the print run they they increased the right they increased the base print run of the base prism cards in 2020 dramatically uh, as they did for all of their their main retail sets, but they left the prisms, the the silver prisms, short print, and we can see that. I mean, they left them considerably, considerably short, short print. Um, and so that is kind of like my go-to. And then you look at this card, and the centering is almost perfect. I'll take it out. I like to look for. I like to look for little surface imperfections or really see if there's any print lines. I see one little tiny, what, what looks like a blemish. So I got my little microfiber cloth right there. And yeah, that might be a little tiny blemish. So depending on what I actually see on the surface and the corners and the edges and stuff, I may decide to flip this raw. Um, you know, he's a great handcuff investment to Derrick Henry. This dude's got an incredible athletic profile, but when you're on the depth chart behind King Henry, who I think has got another year in the tank at a super elite, he could potentially go out and have another 2,000 plus yard season. I mean, Derrick Henry has had no injury concerns to date. And the guys just... You know, you hate to say that about any running back because the volatility is there in their running back position. So knock on wood, right? But he's a guy that is an absolute stud. His size, there is no comparable player for him in the NFL. But this, that's why Darrington Evans' value has really not gone up. He's still considered a super deep sleeper. He's going to be involved in the receiving running back receiving game in Tennessee and he's just also an incredible athlete with him being a 2020 rookie you've got a lot of time to just hold this card and get him now at super low prices in the future whenever he he breaks out and um, 
that that rookie card is going to go up because this is a I mean, this is a premium, premium. Prism Silver is a great card to target for 2020 athletes, as well as like uh, field level silver. So as a guy, I like to buy early and stash kind of playing right there. Probably got that for less than 10 bucks. Uh, what is this? A Jalen Rager. You know, I might have to take the L on Jalen Rager, man. He, he was this past week and week two of the preseason. It looks like Quez Watkins is actually moving up the depth chart ahead of Jalen Rager. I was buying Jalen Rager for several reasons. He does have a really good athletic profile. Um, his cards were very cheap because he didn't break out last year. And the offensive struggles of the Philadelphia Eagles were real with the offensive line and Carson Wentz. And now we've got the super athletic Jalen Hurts, who didn't play this weekend, but they have no concerns about him. It was... Uh, it was he got sent to the hospital for stomach cramp stuff. Said he didn't have COVID, but he was sick, missed his last game. But he's back at practice today, and uh, there should be no doubt that he's going to start week one. Um, and Jay, but Jalen Rager was seen in the in the special teams return game, and then he was not seen until the second half with the the second and third string offense. So I think he'll still be on the field in three wide receiver sets. But as of right now, Devontae Smith. And Quez Watkins are going to be ahead of him in the depth chart. Um, so I'm hoping that Jalen Rager can turn his uh, career around because I have got some nice little investments in him. I like the connection there. Um, he did get taken with a lot of draft capital from TCU. So it'll be interesting. I hope he doesn't turn out to be a bust. But he's not having a great start to 2021 so far. He was dealing with some serious personal issues but that that card that mosaic that's a mosaic mosaic you could kind of mosaic silver mosaic prism just a really nice short print card from mosaic i like those little squares and that design i think i got that card for like probably under 10 bucks uh, let's see what we got in here definitely wasn't baseball i really have no clue what's going on in baseball besides the fact that my buddy said the rays are looking great and we may be poised for another run to uh, the world series which would be awesome for the Rays. Tampa Sports have just been on fire, right? Last two years. Uh, this is a Dynagon Silver released from 2020 Chronicles, but it's a Justin Herbert. And I totally sniped this because I feel like this card was so undervalued. You know, he's the rookie of the year from 2020. Had by far the most expensive rookie card of any of the 2020 rookie quarterbacks today. His, his, uh, his prism, his base prism rookie card trading around $150 for a star stock A. You could probably get that card on eBay for around $100 in auction. That's a base, base prism. Now, this is, uh, we don't really fully know the print run of this Dynagon uh, insert from uh, 2020 Chronicles. I'm sure that the print run has been elevated, but this being the silver variation of that, you got to think that it's, it's not going to be too crazy. And it's Justin Herbert. He's got the beautiful deep ball. He's got the improved offensive line. He's got great weapons. Uh, another rookie that they drafted is, is kind of breaking out there. But like I told you guys in my last video, um, I'm not really investing in any 2021 rookies outside of what I've uh, the, the couple you know blaster boxes that I've, I've ripped open that I plan on flipping and would have deemed the mildly decent cards that I pulled, like a Mac Jones, who looks like Tom Brady 2.0. But um, other than that, I don't really have any collegiate uniform rookie cards because of the fact that they will lose value um, once these Donruss rated rookies come out in, on September 8th. This card I absolutely love because Brian Edwards has, has uh, climbing the depth chart there. He looks like the possession alpha wide receiver that could occupy a 20 to 25 percent target share in the las vegas offense with pocket passer Derek carr next to darren waller now we know darren waller is probably going to be the target leader probably going to be receiving and yardage leader in las vegas but brian edwards should be the leading receipt wide receiver uh, and uh, i love his athletic profile he definitely had breakout potential all over him uh last year ran into covid ran into injuries uh, didn't get the didn't get the playing time at all so he's been looking great so far this year in camp looking great so far in preseason he's getting a ton of of targets and looks from Derek Carr so I think he is poised for breakout over Henry Ruggs Henry Ruggs just was kind of misused in the offense last year and with him being a field stretcher I don't think he fits the possession 
like an intermediate route a target route that Derek Carr, the kind of football that Derek Carr like really likes to play and with them losing Nelson Aguilar all those vacated targets I think Brian Edwards is more likely to take over that role than Henry Ruggs and uh, was able to get this optic hollow rated rookie 2020 pretty cheap it was around 10 bucks or so so let's see what else we got I think I yeah we got time for one more appreciate you guys my my uh, collegiate rookie card video from last week Man, it's got like 700 views right now and over 50 thumbs up. So really thankful for all your guys' support on the quest. And um, we're getting closer and closer to our goal of 100 new signups on Underdog Fantasy using promo code QUEST. And I've been pretty secretive up until now about what the giveaway is. But um, for all you guys that are participating here on the quest, if we make it, I don't want to get your guys' hopes up. So that's why I kind of really haven't talked about it. But if we do make it to over 100 signups on Underdog Fantasy using promo code QUEST, we are going to host a hobby box break of Donruss here on the channel. And it'll be free entry. It'll be free entry into that for select individuals that have been supporting the quest in an elevated manner through Underdog Fantasy. Um, and so I'm really excited to to be able to do that, uh, and I hope we get there. I don't. We're about halfway there. We got a long ways to go. Do not get your hopes up. But if you're not signed up with Underdog Fantasy, it's the best way to get get ready for the fantasy season. Also have the potential to win some money. Uh, you can't go wrong with a $10 deposit and a $25 instant deposit bonus with my promo code. So go over there, sign up, show some support. For me, um, for your fantasy season this year, and this is just a nice Marquez Dada Scantling, who was the number two wide receiver in Green Bay next to Devonta Devonte Adams last year, and Alan because Alan Lazard got struggled with injury, uh, and MVS actually went to my hometown school here at uh, USF, and um, had a little issues with drops, but he's a deep ball threat. In the Green Bay offense now with Aaron Rodgers coming back, his ADP has gone up. So his anticipated production this year, his anticipated opportunity share this year has gone up. And he's a definitely a viable wide receiver two option in Green Bay. And I just want to take advantage of that before he goes out and has a 150-yard game with a couple touchdowns and double digits targets from Aaron Rodgers. Um, you know, and we see his demand for his rookie cards because Green Bay is a huge market. And this one just being absolutely perfect for Green Bay fans. I actually want to work out a deal on this one with a subscriber, Derek Ramsey. I know he's a huge Green Bay fan, and I told him I knew I had an MVS in here, so I'm excited to. And this one's already in an Ultra Pro sleeve, so I'm not even going to mess with it right now. I'll share the FGS scans with you guys later. That's all I got for right now. I will be back very soon. I'll be back tomorrow because I've got three wide receivers that have definitely gone up in ADP big time. They're continuing to climb in ADP. They're continuing to climb in opportunity share in their offense, and their rookie cards are lagging behind that. So right now is a perfect opportunity to maybe get in on some of these buy low opportunities still before the production before the production reaches the field, which in turn sends their rookie cards going up in value. And at which time that's going to be a good time for a lot of us that are already holding them to sell. But right now with the preseason, the way the hobby has evolved this year, there's still buying opportunities in the market. So I want to share that, guy, share that knowledge with you guys as best as I can. So I will be back very soon to do that. All right. So until then, guys, I'll see you in that next video. Peace. Let's see. Let's see. Ooh. What's up everybody welcome or welcome back to the quest andy here back with another video hope you guys enjoy enjoyed hope you guys enjoyed that week two preseason action preseason starting to heat up we got one more week of preseason then we'll get into some nfl action just a couple weeks away but we're rolling there we're rolling there with all the electronics recording and going 